Hello, my name is Walter Williams. I'm Rebecca Williams. And we're from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And we have an Oliver Elite II, which is hole number 104. <laughs> Coco. Coco. This is Coco. We have a very interesting Oliver story that Rebecca recites to a number of people when we see them. I'm gonna let her talk about that. Okay. So we used to go camping with the kids when they were little in um, a pop-up. And that was a lot of fun, but it was hard also. So um, as they got older, we got rid of the pop-up and uh, we didn't camp for many, many years. And then some friends of ours got a casita. And Walter came home and was like, oh, Jim's got a casita, we should buy a casita. And so I said, eh. I wasn't sure I wanted to camp at all. So um, I said, let's rent a casita and see how it goes. So we did that. We rented a casita. We went to Niagara Falls and we went to um, Vermont. And we had a great time. But after two days in the casita, Walter said, good thing we didn't buy the casita because it had some issues. Um, but while we were in Vermont, we met an older couple and they had a bowler, which is a very, it was from the 1970s. It was a, um, fiberglass, cute little thing, and they had restored it, and we got to talk in, and they said, oh, if you're from Tennessee and you like fiberglass, you should really check out an Oliver, and we were like, what's an Oliver? So we're driving down the road, and I'm looking on the iPad at the Oliver website going, oh my gosh, look at this, <laughs> and Walter's like, what? <laughs> so I'm reading him things, and we decided we had to go see the factory. So we made an appointment to go see the factory. Um, I think that was spring of 19. <laughs> and um, he loved it. He was like underneath the things looking at how they were made. He just really appreciates a good machine. So, um, so that's how we got our Oliver. And it was great fun. <laughs> the main thing that really struck me with an Oliver when we went through the factory tour was how well, bu well built it was, the fact that it was on aircraft aluminum, the fact that it was a double hull fiberglass camper. As Rebecca said, we had rented a Casita, which was a single hull, but I like the idea of a four season trailer. I like the idea of not having any of the pipes or plumbing hanging underneath because we've seen, we've seen cases where people knock it off. I like the sleekness of the bottom. <clears throat> and what I appreciate is, especially as I get older, is light. So having a white interior and having ample lighting, multiple lighting, main lighting, you know, cabinetry lighting, under cabinetry lighting, outside lighting was a big deal for me because I've been, uh, grew up camping with my parents and we go in and we just had battery lights and you're just sitting in the dark half the time. Oliver feels like you're in a nice, bright, warm environment. And we have uh, since then actually taken it, taken it through all four seasons too. So that mm -hmm. really paid off for us and we can talk about that too. We camped in 16 degrees in um, Bryce Canyon, Utah. And it was, it was okay. <laughs> yeah, 16 degrees gets a little bit cool. It was a little chilly, but it was but, okay, uh, we were fine. Woke up with snow on the camper, snow on the car but <clears throat> we were very glad we were in the Oliver. Yeah, and we really wanted an Oliver because um, our goal is to see as many national parks as we can. So um, the Oliver can fit in just about any national park, really, that we, we, there are some campgrounds we haven't been able to get into, but there's always a campground in a national park that we can get into. And so, so far, we were counting, and I think we've hit almost 20. National parks, yeah. um, In the, how many years have we had this? Three years? Four? This is our fourth season. Yeah, fourth so season. we're gonna do uh, at least a couple this summer too. <laughs> so we, if, if um, you look at the back of our camper, you're gonna see the word SOGO. And what we liked about this camper, reading about it, and now owning it, is the fact that it's a go camper. So it's not a camper that you, like a fifth wheel that you put on the beach, stay there for three months. This is a camper where you, where you literally go across the country in it, and you should get it for that reason, in our opinion, because it tracks beautifully behind the truck. I don't even have to put uh, trailer mirrors on it. Uh, it. It tracks where the truck is. So the nice thing about that too is it just goes. So our first outing, just to try it, we went from uh, the Oak Ridge, Knoxville area up to the Upper Peninsula, Michigan. 
that was just a quick trip of a couple of weeks. But the next year, we went out 6,000 miles and we did it during COVID. And what a blessing to have bought this thing before COVID because we were one of the few people that could go out. And we went 6,000 miles from the Knoxville area up to the Badlands, to uh, Mount Rushmore, to Glacier, to Tetons, to Yellowstone, and the Rocky Mountains before we came home. As Rebecca said, that was one of our legs, but this trailer just pulled smoothly through the whole thing. So we wanted a trailer that would let us explore the country, not just explore within 50 miles of our house. Comfortably, because I'm really more into glamping than camping, okay? <laughs> So I am comfortable in the Oliver, right? That's true, after we had a pop-up, in fact, she had me put an air conditioner on a pop-up, if you can imagine that. Yeah, that but was after, not comfortable. But after that, she said, that's <laughs> it. And uh, she said, we that are- That was fun, but it was not comfortable. <laughs> I would like for uh, the camper to be comfortable, so. And once your children get older, our children got older, we didn't need this, all that bedding, and it, Oliver fits us very well for two people and yeah. a dog. I really love the bed. Now, you know, it's an aftermarket bed. We've been through a couple. We had a sleep number bed, which is the air mattress, and then a foam topper on top of it. Um, and it popped <laughs> in the Great Sand Dunes National Park at 7,000 feet elevation. I saw, so we decided not to get another one. We just have a really nice mattress. Um, but so we have the king bed and actually we have a mod to it. So it's a little smaller than that because we have some storage that is built in. But um, I love my bed. It's really comfortable. I love our, um, that the temperature is good. You know, like, so our air conditioner works, the heater works, you know, I'm just, I'm just comfortable. We do cook inside of it. We use the bathroom inside of it. So we use it 100%. Um, but just, I guess, all the things working together makes it really comfortable. So for me, I would say it was it's the ability to have a self-contained camper that we can boondock in. As I mentioned, the first trip we took, we went to Michigan and we were new to this. So we stayed in campgrounds all the way to Michigan and back. And then we became, and then I really did some more investigation. I said, you know, we need to look at this thing called Harvest Host, which is really expanded. I really liked it because one thing about traveling a lot, of course, you gotta pay for gas. But when you travel a lot, you're kind of doing one night stops and Harvest Hosts allowed us to do that. But it is a, it is a boondocking experience. You don't hook up your water, you don't hook up your electricity, you literally just park. You don't even unhook your trailer oftentimes because it's one night. The Oliver with the solar package just let us just truck right along. And we literally went uh, that 6,000 mile trip. We made it all the way to uh, the great uh, Badlands before we camped in an official state park. So what we did is we anchored at state park, uh, anchored at national parks, excuse me, and state parks, but national parks. And then on the trip in between the parks, and some of them were three or four days, we did harvest host. So we did not stay in a campground. Not a big deal. People think it's, it's a challenge. It's not, it works well. And as you get out west, there's gas stations that let you dump and fill up with water. So the ability to be self-contained, the ability to pull over at a rest stop and say, hey, it's time for lunch. We got a bathroom. Uh, we, we oftentimes even take a nap because we're we working. often take a nap at rest stops. <laughs> oh, maybe we should say the solar power. Like the solar power is really cool. And um, I don't think I'd ever experienced solar power before having the camper. And I, I'm just amazed at how often we use solar and we, do, we don't use the generator that much even when we're boondocking because if it's on a shoulder season, you just don't need air conditioning that much, which is why we would use the, the generator. So we often go weeks without using a generator. We're just on solar. So we have been, I calculated last night, we've been about 15,000 miles in the trailer, two big 6,000 mile trips. And because we did the shoulder season, either early or late, spring or fall, we've used our generator two times. That's how well this works. Of course, you need your heater. As, as Rebecca said, you get into Bryce, you're gonna need a little heat but uh, in the winter. But uh, the ability to hold the temperature is really important too. So it can get cold outside and the inside will stay warm. It'll get hot outside and the inside will stay cool. 
but I think we call it our go machine. So it's named appropriately, so go, so go, why mm -hmm. not? He loves to hike. And so I go along. <laughs> He can hike a lot longer and a lot further than I can, but I enjoy a hike, but I have my limits. So, we, so <laughs> what we like in the national parks is the beauty of getting away from people. Yeah. So I will oftentimes want to hike. Rebecca usually goes in the morning with me and then I'll go back out after lunch. Uh -huh. And if there's a waterfall, I've been known to hike to the same waterfall three or four times before we leave just because I love the hike. I take the I dog. love a good waterfall, so I will hike to a waterfall. I will do that. <laughs> but uh, we, I just like to be out and walking around. And the dog, with a dog, she loves to be out and walking around. She's so. a good trail dog. She loves the trail. But yeah. I guess we, we've done that. And, <clears throat> and we're looking forward to going to festivals. Now, our, our daughter actually ran a balloon festival for three years. We helped work on that, and we used our Oliver. We boondocked for the week of the festival to help her. And we've done that three times. Perfect machine for that because you've got everything yeah. there. So we, we look for those kind of festivals. In fact, we're going to go to yeah. a music. We're going to Kentucky one. Music Week. Have you heard of that? <clears throat> it's in Kentucky, uh, south of Louisville. And I'm taking my hammered dulcimer. I'm taking classes all week. And he's going to go hike, <laughs> I guess. I don't know what he's going to do. Right. But see, that helps us go places and do things um, we both enjoy. You know, more uh, with more fun. I mean, we could stay in a hotel, but that's just not as much fun. And the no. dog. The dog can't go <clears throat> we joke. unless we take the Oliver. It's the big dog house. We, yeah, we, we jokingly say we got it so we could keep take the dog with us too. But, yeah. but in reality, <laughs> there's one thing that I don't, I don't know that people really talk about is when we were even packing to come to this rally, all we did is take our stuff out of our house and put it in the trailer. Didn't have to put it in a suitcase. And the beauty of this is it's kind of like a miniature house in the fact that we don't unpack. We just pack it and then we live out of it and then we unpack it when we get home as opposed to living out of a suitcase, which is unpack and repack every day. So I enjoy that because then you're able to kind of take more clothing. You're able to pick out what works for you. Um, and it's just less bulk. You know, we've stayed in friends' uh, driveways and they, in, they want to insist that we come inside and sleep in their house. And we're like, no, really, we are more comfortable in our own bedroom. And they just don't understand that, but they don't have an Oliver. <laughs> I will say that we have friends that Rebecca mentioned earlier that, that we talked about having a casita. They are, they are thinking about moving up to an Oliver Oh yeah, right our now. friends that bought the casita, they sold the casita. Now they want an Oliver. <laughs> So, uh, so, and we, and an interesting thing that we've encountered many times is when we pull into a rest stop, someone will come up and say, is that an Oliver? Say, so, yeah, we've heard of it. Can we see it? Yes. Or what is it? Yeah. But uh, the most unique thing was when we were in the upper peninsula of Michigan is when we had uh, a gentleman who owned an Airstream come run over to us. The first thing he did is he said, that's an Oliver. I said, yes, it is. <laughs> and he, he said, I said, would you like me to show, show you? And he said, no, I know everything about it. I've read all the specs. So the interesting thing is people that like the, the, the look of an Airstream, like the look of an Oliver, we're, we're seeing that too. So in other words, uh, uh, we've already met another couple that had an Airstream and went to an Oliver because they like the idea of it being all molded. So the stability of it, the fact it doesn't rattle and shake itself apart I mean, every trailer rattles and shakes. It just doesn't it shake itself apart. So I always tell people, think about how you would use it. If you want to go sit at the lake for a week with all of your grandchildren, you probably do need a bigger camper and you're not going anywhere and it doesn't matter how it tracks behind your car. Okay, so if that's how you want to use a camper, then get a stick camper, put it by the lake, enjoy it with the kids. But if you want to go and you want to see the country, then you need something that really travels well. And especially if it's just two people, maybe two people and a dog or a small child, the Oliver's perfect, uh, perfect size, and it's going to be reliable and it's going to get you there. If you want something that's high quality and dependable and you can count on, go with an Oliver. Um, <clears throat> when we were going out west and we went to Glacier, we went through a number of states where there was a time or two where we could we were on a highway and we could see as far as we could see left or right and forward and there wasn't a car. 
And I thought to myself, I'm glad I'm in an Oliver because if, if something were to happen here, I don't even have a cell phone service. I'm stuck. So <clears throat> if, you're, if you're going to use it the way we do and go across the country and take it through campgrounds and environments you're not sure of, get something that can take it. Mm-hmm. And get something that you can uh, stop on the side of the road and take a nap in and not sweat or not freeze, so to speak. But <clears throat> mm-hmm. it is just a, a good quality machine. We're very happy we got it. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we went from a pop up to this. And the reason we did is we said we wanted one trailer to be done, you know, one and done. And that's actually why I think you all named this the legacy that you could pass it down because it is a one and one and done trailer. So for us, we didn't want to step through all the other fiberglasses. We wanted to go to the one we wanted, and that's why we ended up here. I would say, uh, I, I would say that if you have an opportunity to see one, uh, see one. If you're close to Tennessee and Holinwall, check the plant out. You'll be impressed with the plant. You'll be Im- very impressed with the sales staff. You'll be impressed with the mechanics. Uh, if you're in parts of the country that are far from Tennessee, see if you can see an Oliver. Oliver owners are very proud. We have, uh, for me, what I enjoy about it is when I have questions, I can go on the Oliver forum and other people will help me. The service center is outstanding. The owner community is really outstanding in the sense that many people have done modifications, many people have encountered things that even the service center hasn't seen and they're able to help you. So. I feel very confident that if I encounter something, I can get assistance in fixing a problem. I know what I want to say. Um, If you want to see an Oliver and you live in the Knoxville area, there are three in Oak Ridge, which is right outside of Knoxville. Three Olivers in Little Oak Ridge. That's that's like a record, I think, per capita. Anyway, (laughs) come come see one. Thank you. (laughs) 